How to approach coding challenges. Here we go. Hey everyone, Isaac here. In this video, we're gonna look at how to approach coding challenges. How can you get better at quantum programming? Well, there's a few options, right? You can contribute to something like Penny Lane, an open source piece of software. You can immerse yourself in our code book, which is a free online textbook that has code exercises in it, as well as like a traditional kind of textbook half. And you can take classes in school that are related to programming. But sometimes nothing gets the brain churning like a good old fashioned coding challenge, like what we have as part of our annual hackathon called QHack and what we have available now on pennylane.ai. Anyway, why should you care about coding challenges? Coding challenges are a great way to learn new concepts, understand complicated problems easily, get better at programming, maybe even nail job interviews or impress dates. Maybe, probably not that, but maybe. You can also win some pretty slick prizes at hackathons like QHack. Typically, solutions to coding challenges get more points or are better if they use less code, run faster, etc. But at the end of the day, it's about getting the right idea, not spitting out 2,000 lines of code in like five minutes. So if any of this interests you, stick around and we'll jump into how you can approach coding challenges. As an example problem, we'll look at an available challenge on our sparkly new challenge platform called Returning Probabilities. To access the challenges, you need to create an account on pennylane.ai. It's a simple sign-in process. Once you're signed in, you can go to pennylane.ai slash challenges, and you can see all of the available coding challenges that you can try out. Now we will be posting new challenges every so often, so make sure that you follow us to know when those challenges drop. Okay, step number one in how to approach coding challenges, reading comprehension. This really goes for any written problem that you encounter in life. Read it well. Note down what you don't understand. Write out the question in your own words. Do your own sketches. Most importantly, resist the urge to just copy and paste the problem statement into something that could spit out a solution for you. Remember, we're here to learn and that's not going to help you. So on our challenge platform, on the left-hand side of each challenge, you'll see like uh, instructions for what the coding challenge is particularly about. There might be some helpful information before. Let's scroll down to the challenge statement. You're tasked with calculating the probability that a rotated qubit is in the ground state zero. The completed code should define a device, create a quantum function and Q node, run the circuit, and process the results. The quantum function should rotate the qubit around the x-axis by an angle phi using QML.rx, measure the probabilities of the qubit being in different states, and so on. You can read the rest. But basically, we need to create a one qubit circuit with one gate in it that does one measurement. So that was just the challenge statement. There's also a section at the bottom of every challenge called challenge code. It just explains the code that's on the right, what you need to complete, and so on. In the challenge window on the right-hand side of these challenges, there's yellow and white areas. The yellow areas are things that you can't edit, so you can only put code in the white areas. Now, if you did want to mess around with the entire code, let's say on your laptop in like VS Code, Sublime, PyCharm, or something like that, you can just copy all the code here and paste it in whatever IDE you want. When you do that, you'll see all these test functions that are responsible for testing out your solution. You'll see the public test cases that are used to test your solution against. There are private ones as well that obviously you can't see. So there's a function called simple circuit that we need to complete. And then there's some details about what the input to this function will be and what the output can be. Now let's say I was a complete beginner to Penny Lane and I had absolutely no idea what to do here. There's a couple places where you can look for help directly on the challenge platform. In the instructions tab, there should be a section with helpful resources and hints for this particular coding challenge. But we also have a resources tab that will show you, you know, how to like how to install Penny Lane, direct you to the documentation, go to our discussion forum, demos, codebook, etc. So at this point in the steps to how to approach a coding challenge, just write down what you don't understand, make any sketches that you want, try and write things in your own words. We'll come back to what you don't understand in subsequent steps. But on to step number two which is divide and conquer. In the case of coding challenges that we give you on our challenge platform or during QHack, it's kind of like a fill in the blanks scenario. We give you some code that you then have to complete. Look at bits and pieces of the code, maybe rather than the whole thing as it can get daunting. Write out parts of the code that you do know how to solve and leave the ones you don't empty for now. So, okay, as an example here, let's say I know what a device is in Penny Lane and I know how to define a device. I use QML.device and we'll use default qubits 
and the circuit is a one qubit circuit. Okay, but there's maybe one thing here that I don't understand, which is a Q node. I have absolutely no idea what a Q node is, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Now this quantum function called simple circuit, it needs to have a QML.rx gate in it. Okay, so it's given to me in the problem. Maybe I know how to do that. I'm gonna put it in the function, QML.rx, um, and I need to give it the angle and the wire that this operator acts on, which is the zeroth wire. All right, and then maybe I just don't understand what probs does. I'm a, I'm a little confused about this. I've written down QML.probs and what a Q node is as things that I don't understand, which brings us to our next step, which is documentation is your friend. If you don't know what a particular function, method, attribute, or whatever in Penny Lane is doing, our documentation is great. I am biased when I say that, yes, but let's just look at the documentation here and uh, we'll show you what I mean. So in the resources tab here, there should be a link to the documentation. So I'm gonna go to that. So one of the things that I said I didn't understand was QML.probs. So I'm just gonna type in the search bar here at the top. First result, awesome, just gonna click on it. All right, so this is how pretty much every piece of documentation for a function method whatever in penny lane looks like so the probs function is calculating the probability of each computational basis state there's some more verbiage there but we'll scroll down the parameters section are the things that it takes in as an argument so it, you must provide probs uh, a wire that it acts on and it can take in an observable called op this one is optional now some of this might be computer science jargon to a lot of people but if you scroll down we have usage details and almost every function, method, et cetera, in Penny Lane. So you can just see it working in a real scenario. So in this particular example, we have a two qubit circuit. The circuit has one Hadamard gate in it, returns QML.probs, and there's more and more detailed use cases of QML.probs down below. So yes, I am totally biased when I say that our documentation is great and you should use it, but I really do feel like it gives you a lot of information that is very digestible. Okay, step number four, you gotta dive in. Stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! You've heard it before in programming that you learn more by doing than by studying, say. And I can definitely attest to this. Try filling in the blanks in your code. Test to code yourself on a specific case or you might know the final answer or use the test case that's provided to you in the challenges and submit it. Got something wrong? Look at the error message and try again, reassess until you get it right. If you're caught in a loop and you're just plain old stuck, ask a friend or you can go to one of our many support channels like our discussion forum or our Slack channel. Okay, so for this particular question, I now understand what QML.probs does and I'm just gonna return QML.probs on the zeroth wire. Now, the other thing I need to do is make simple circuit a Q node. And how you do this is by decorating this function with at QML.QNode. And let's submit it and see what happens. Now in this submissions tab here on the left, you'll get a history of all your submissions here. You can see that I got a couple of incorrect ones. My most recent submission passed, so good. If you were stuck for a long time on a particular question and you did eventually get it right, feel proud. And if you can't seem to figure it out, that's totally fine too. Take some time off this question, try a new one, go for a walk, just take a break from it to clear your head from this particular question and come back to it later. Which brings me to the next step. Practice, practice, and practice. We're talking about practice, man. If you don't use it, you lose it. And that's pretty much true in general. Whether you succeeded in a coding challenge or not, just try another one out. Doing just one coding challenge isn't really gonna help you. You gotta keep practicing. But we talking about practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? The Penny Lane challenges at pennylane.ai slash challenges are a great way to get reps in. Practice here and participate in QHack 2024, where you might be able to win some awesome prizes. Currently on the challenge platform, there are seven questions. We just did this one here. Again, we'll be continuously adding challenges to the challenge platform, so make sure you follow us to know when they drop. And that'll do it for today's video. Really hope you found this useful. Our new challenge platform is available now. You should definitely go check it out. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, like this video if you liked it, follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn to hear when the new challenges drop on the challenge platform so you can continue practicing. Mark QX 2024 in your calendars so that you can put your skills to the test and possibly win some sweet prizes. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Poggers, let's do it. How to, wait, um, um, and, um. Okay, step number one to how to approach, co co